This is a string trimmer, but not just any string trimmer. This specific trimmer was handpicked by the GOAT himself, Project Farm, as the best string trimmer on the market right now. my first impressions of this trimmer right here is that I love the colorway, especially like how they blacked out this shaft over here. Clearly out of all three of these, I think that the wall hands down looks the best. One of the areas that Project Farm scored this machine really high in is cut speed. So right now we're in the mean streets in Naperville, Illinois, underneath this power line. And we're gonna cut down some of this dead vegetation behind me. So another area that Project Farm scored this machine really high in is startup torque. Now you could think of this metric as almost like the zero to 60 time for a string trimmer. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. Right when I press the trigger, it instantly starts up. Listen to this. Now, if we compare that to another string trimmer like the Toro I have back in the garage, that one takes about a full second to start firing up. And you might be thinking, Oh, it's just one second, what's the big deal? I would agree with you, on paper it doesn't sound like that big of a deal. But when you're in the field and you're chopping down weeds and you gotta wait that extra second, it actually really throws your momentum off. So you know what makes this thing even more impressive? That brush that we were cutting down, it had some thick stalks to it. It's not like we were just cutting down like dead grass. Like that stuff was some serious brush, right Bert? Yeah, it was pretty thick. Did you just say thick ones? I might have. Stop. All right guys, so one of the first things I noticed when we were cutting down the brush at the park are these rubber handle grips over here on this machine. If you take a look at them, they're really thick and beefy and they have a really soft rubber texture to them. Actually, they're unlike any other string trimmer that I've held in the hand. But if we compare these hand grips to the Ego, it has more of a foam texture when you hold on to it and it's not as easy to hold in the hand and it's a lot more skinnier. And if we take a look at the Toro, that one is just like straight up hard plastic and is not comfortable at all. But these are thick, substantial, and they feel very heavy duty compared to those. And some of you guys might be wondering what these safety glasses are. As a matter of fact, these are actually the wall. And when I went on Amazon to find the cheapest safety glasses, these were one of the cheapest. They're only like six, seven bucks, and they're really comfortable. And the lenses have like this HD texture. So when you look around, everything just looks a lot more clear. So it's no secret that battery powered equipment is starting to take over. But a big question on a lot of people's minds is how long do these batteries actually last? So real quick, I want to show you guys how much battery we got left on this after cutting that stuff down at the park we're cutting for about i'd say a solid five minutes right Bert? yeah it was about five yeah so if i push this battery meter over here we could see that there's two out of three bars left and this is a six amp hour battery so conservatively i'd say there's about 10 to 15 minutes left on this battery but i want to clue you guys in on one of the best money saving tips when it comes to battery powered equipment these batteries go on sale very often and when i say often i mean like damn near every other week and that's not just for dewalt that's for all the big tool companies milwaukee ryobi rigid all of them they constantly have sales on their batteries all the time for example this battery right here is a six amp hour battery and it normally costs 220 dollars but i ended up buying it on a daily deal at home depot for 70 dollars off so my advice to you is if that first battery is not cutting it Keep an eye out for those daily deals on Amazon or Home Depot and just slowly start accumulating batteries as they go on sale. Boss ass bitch. So another thing I noticed at the park is this trimmer is actually pretty light. So I weighed it against my other three trimmers and unsurprisingly, it really was the lightest with the head weighing in at eight pounds and nine ounces. The second lightest one was the Toro, which weighed in at eight pounds, 15 ounces. And the heaviest by far was the Ego weighing in at 10 pounds and eight ounces. And another thing I noticed aside from how light it is, is that it's very well balanced. If you take a look at this clip, you can see me lifting it up with one finger and it's balancing fairly easy. And that's with the battery attached. And if you combine all these factors together along with these super comfortable handlebars what you get in my opinion is one of the most luxurious trimming experiences possible now chances are if you've done any research on this trimmer one common thing that you'll keep on running to from the reviewers on amazon is that the head of this trimmer sucks so right now i'm gonna clue you guys in on one of the best kept secrets in lawn care
This is an Echo Speed Feed head, and it is arguably one of the best string trimmer heads to ever exist. And these trimmer heads are used by a lot of the professionals in the field, and the reason they like them is number one, the build quality is really solid, and number two is because they're really easy to re-spool the string. Now real quick, I wanna show you guys the build quality in these two trimmer heads. This DeWalt is made of a much thinner gauge plastic than this Speed Feed, and you could kinda of tell when we tap on them. Listen to this. Now listen to the Speed Feed it's a much more solid build. And it kind of surprises me that DeWalt would put this on their trimmer head considering that they know people are gonna be slamming these bump feeds on the ground all the time. But DeWalt, if you guys are watching, you have a near perfect trimmer. All you have to do is fix this trimmer head situation. All right guys, so I'm gonna show you real quick how to change the head on this machine. All you're gonna need is a small screwdriver. If you guys take a look closely, you can see that there's a little slot down here. What we wanna do is put our screwdriver in here and that's gonna act as a stopper so we could spin this head on. So keep in mind that this is reverse threading. So rather than spinning counterclockwise, you're gonna to wanna to spin clockwise to take it off. So the cool thing about these Echo Speed Feed heads is that even though they come with a bunch of different adapters, this out of the box fits the DeWalt trimmer perfectly fine. You don't need to attach any adapters. So all you do is take the Speed Feed head, make sure you have the screwdriver in there, reverse thread it on, and you'll be in business. All right, so we all know one of the worst feelings in the world is running out of string when we're in the middle of trimming weeds. But luckily, these speed feeds make it really easy to change out the string. All you're gonna wanna do is grab about 10 to 15 feet of string. I personally like using this 0.095 string. It's thicker and it won't break on you as easily. All we have to do is take a look at this head. You see this hole where the string goes into? We wanna keep on rotating this head until we could see right through the head to the other side. Let's take our string and feed it right through there until it's about at the halfway point. A little trick that I like to use, just like to let the trimmer drop. So right there, I know that's about halfway. And all we're gonna have to do now is rotate this head clockwise. You know, the good thing about this is we don't have to worry about any single spools or any double spools. It just makes it really easy. Oh yeah, one thing I almost forgot to mention is that this trimmer has two speeds. It has a high and it has a low. And I can tell you guys already from the amount that I used it, that the low is so powerful that I already find myself feathering the throttle. Oh my God, feathering the throttle. Honestly, you guys don't even need to use the high unless you're probably doing a commercial job and you got some really intense brush. I would just keep it on the low. And the good thing about that is that it also saves on battery. And by now you're probably wondering, why did I buy that DeWalt string trimmer if I'm already heavily invested in the Milwaukee platform? I would agree with you, it's kind of silly because the number one piece of advice to hear on YouTube is once you buy into a battery platform, you should stay there. And it makes sense because oftentimes the batteries can cost even more than the tools. But what I can tell you is I'm so impressed with this DeWalt string trimmer that I'm gonna build a dedicated lawn tool collection of just the wall tools. This is without a doubt the best string trimmer I've ever tried in my whole life. And I wanna thank Project Farm for even putting it on my radar because to be honest with you, never in a million years would I have thought DeWalt would have made the best lawn tool. And I also want to thank you guys for watching week after week. You guys have no idea how much it means. And with that, this is George from Princess Cut.